bad way, but this stuff is not going to help. Between you and me, I'm past caring. What are you looking at? I keep thinking you have a look of a young Johnny Cash. He were a miserable beggar, too. Go on. Give us a smile. Crack your face. <sighs> uh, for your information, it's not had very much to smile about lately. So why don't you shut your trap? Everyone's always looking, gassing about me, about my boy. I'm sure she doesn't even know. Why don't you come through to the back? Give us a chance to have a proper catch-up. Go on, then. Why not? I think the most annoying thing about Flora is Daniel seems to really like her. So now, just that natural. Are you sure you're not exaggerating about how evil she is? She looks like a sweet old lady to me. Yes, ladies, what can I get you? What are you having, Doris? Oh, I'll have a milk stout. Bertha? Yeah, I'll have another milk stout. Three milk stouts, please. And a bag of pork scratchings. <laughs> Don't worry, you want to watch yourselves. They can be lethal, them things. Mm, that's what sent Edna off to me to make her. Mm -hmm. Tell you what. Let's live dangerously for once. <laughs> so, how's it going, my lover boy? Yeah, great. We get on so well. I can't believe I said no when he asked me to live with him. You regretting it? Yeah, I am. I honestly think he might be the one. Oh! Look at you all smiley and lovey-dovey. <laughs> As soon as the old bag bogs off, I'm going to move in with him. That way. Mm. Call yourself a solicitor. There's got to be a way. Listen, it's not easy to overturn someone's last wishes. Aiden's made it very clear what he wanted. Oh, well, you heard the man. That's it, isn't it? Game over. Uh, I don't think so. We can't give up that easy. First thing we do is destroy the will. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't do that. You do know that Ben, his solicitor, has got a copy of that, don't you? Yes, but at least this will buy us some time. Look, give it here. I'll take a look and have a think. We need a plan. Right, you've got to keep Alia on side, be nice to her, and don't give up hope. And you, you do whatever it takes to make sure Underworld stays with its rightful owner. There has to be a loophole in that. There has to be. I'm not sure this is strictly ethical. Ethical my backside. Don't pretend you're Mr Squeaky Clean. We all know that ship sailed a long time ago. You don't take any prisoners, do you? No, I'm doing this for my husband. He's lost enough. I'm sorry if he freaked you out. I suppose he was a big fella for a built-up area. It's with everything that's happened. I'm just not myself. Hey, don't get upset. Take the note. I'm just being a silly moan. No, you don't. Come here. No one being too hard on her. But every time she opens her mouth, I just want to smack her. Shut her up. It's like the flat's too small. I'm claustrophobic. Can't breathe. You were saying about finding a letter? Suicide note. Written months ago. Saint February. All that time he'd been planning. At well, first he gave me some kind of consolation. At least I'd had those extra months with him. But now it's making me feel worse. My son had made the biggest decision of his life and I didn't even notice it. Do I really walk around with my eyes closed? Head full of retirement. Future plans. What I'm having for me, flaming tea. 
I will never understand why he didn't speak to me. Am I really that unapproachable? Oh, no. No, of course you're not. I could even have sent an email. Anything to get the conversation started. Anything to stop him going back to that flat and throwing his life away. The day I found him, I let myself into his flat. It was so quiet. It was the first thing I noticed. I'm thinking that he'll be there with his head over the toilet the morning after the night before. Then I spot it. The note. Don't go into the bathroom. And you, as soon as I saw it, there he was in front of me. I'm looking at him. And I'm not believing what I'm seeing. I tried to save him, but I, I was too late. I... Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm glad you're divorcing him. Makes sense. Your relationship's dead and buried. Feels good to make it official. Throwing out the old, making way for the new. Jasmine. Um. How are you? Up to my elbows in vegetables as usual. Wondering if you fancy going out tonight. What do you say, slave driver? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Um, give me a chance to wash and brush up first, would you? Seven bells in the Rovers. Perfect. Good. <laughs> as I was saying. Out with the old, in with the new. Well, just because it's the right thing for you doesn't mean it's good for me, Marana. Your wife has a girlfriend. It would be madness to hold out false hope. Well, she comes to work with me almost every day. That's got to mean something. You have to accept she's gay. Well, she hasn't actually said that. Sometimes, actions speak louder than words. What are you writing? Well, you know how forgetful I am sometimes. I'm keeping notes. I was right to have me doubts about that slot and she made. Adams told me in the past she's played fast and loose with Daniel's affections. They keep staring at me, giving me dirty looks. You're paranoid. Maybe they're putting a case on you. Hey. So we celebrating? Are the Gazette publishing and exposing the nursing home? Completely underwhelmed by it. So there's nothing new about it. No way. Underfunded public service run badly. Sadly, Watergate, is it? So what's going to happen to the little old lady? Flora. Hmm. Oh, she'll just have to stay with us for a bit longer, won't she? How much longer? As long as it takes. <clears throat> Tim said you'd be in here. Do mind if I join you? I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to swerve me or my family. Don't be silly. I'm sorry my dad showered at you. We've all got to make allowances. I can't even begin to imagine what he's going through. Uh, Rosie was chatting to Rana this morning and she'd mentioned how upset you were about Aiden because of the text. Yeah. I hate to ask, but do you still have it? Was that it? Oh, yeah, but I, I, I didn't even bother to respond. He, he might want you to tell me something. I don't know the feeling. He wanted to hang out with me at the party, but... I was too drunk to stick around. You know, if I could go back and, and do things differently, I really would. Same. You two seemed really close. Yeah, we spoke a lot over the past few months. What about? Life. Life. 
Wouldn't it be too weird for you to tell me what you said? Well, you two don't dilly-dally about, do you? Uh, well, that was all the summer's doing. I just do as I'm told. Very wise. Mm, we've already got a lot of local businesses signed up, like the garage, the Rovers, the streetcars. And uh, my mate at the helpline, he's up for it. Brilliant. And Roy's been great, hasn't he? You know, letting us have the fundraiser at the, the cafe and everything tomorrow night. Well, we could bounce a couple of ideas around now if you fancy it. Yeah? All right, get through to the office. I'll be with you in a minute. She's a star, isn't she? I should sign her up tomorrow. Hmm. Yeah, doing her good. Getting stuck in something positive. But if she starts to take over hmm. and run the place, just send her home. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Oh, yeah. Um, listen, I just want to apologise for earlier. I was a right cow. Well, you're grieving, Carla. Well, that's no excuse. I should know better. I'm not the enemy, you know. You and me... We're on the same side. Excuse me. Sorry to bother you. Have you got a minute? I'll give you two minutes, but that's your lot. There's a pint over the road with my name on it. Thanks. Um, is that you? <laughs> that's my boss, Tom. I'm Deck, one of the grease monkeys. Oh, hi, Deck. Um, I believe Josh Tucker used to work here. I've got nothing to say about him. Wait, wait, what can you tell me about Josh? Uh, boss sacked him. He's trouble, that one. Why? What happened? What's it to you? Uh, nothing. Um, he asked a mate of mine for some work. I just thought I'd, I'd check him out. Well, tell your mate I wouldn't touch him with a barge pole. He does this cheeky, chappy, everybody's mate thing, but it's all fake. Why do you say that? What did he do? He got into a fight with one of the customers. Boss won't put up with that sort of thing. And you can't tell me anything else? He can't be trusted. Put it that way. You know, we should definitely put some cash into Summer's talking campaign. It's like Carla said, if it saves even one person's life, then they don't want to die for nothing. Oh, right. That's how it works, yeah? What? My son threw his life away like it meant nothing. But this makes it OK. Well, I'm not saying that. Aiden's suicide will be cancelled out if we save some person I've never even heard of, never even clapped eyes on. Suddenly it all makes sense. Johnny, no one's saying that. He seems so happy. That's what gets me. You know. Inside he must have been suffering like mad. Do you know what hurts the most? I'm the only one he didn't say a proper goodbye to. You know, maybe he wanted to say something to you at the party. But why leave it till last minute like that? I'm his sister. Don't I deserve more? All those conversations he had with everyone in the last few weeks, they, they meant something. Because he didn't want any loose ends. But why didn't he do that for me? There was no deep, meaningful talk, nothing to to help me make sense of all this. Why didn't he say goodbye to me? Because he loved you the most. You two were so close, he probably couldn't come to terms and do it. Come here. <laughs> well, I know for a fact that Chalk McTavish has a bottle of scotch stashed away. Mm. Well, for someone who's blind as a bat, you don't miss the trick. And I got my Thornbirds DVD oh, with me. Lovely. Well, I've got something better. Mm. What is it? Why well, don't I surprise you? We should get going. Mm. Get the best mm. seats. So, how is David? He's not going. He's barely coping. Feeling so helpless and a sense of futility like there's nothing you can do. I don't know about that. I'm worried about Zidane. Oh, what's he done now? 
Well, I, th I thought speed dial would be a positive thing. Yeah, it is. He's building up a nice little business there. But now I think he only wants to spend time there because he needs an excuse to hang around with Rana. Oh, for goodness sake, it's all out in the open with Kate. What's she got to do to convince him it's over? He's deluding himself. Right, well, you forget your family for tonight and I'll have a word with Z. Hello, Yasmin. <laughs> Looking ravishing, as usual. Thank you. Should we throw caution to the wind and go into town? There's a Joy Division tribute act on in the Northern Quarter. <laughs> Sounds intriguing. <laughs> oh, well, you behave yourselves, you two. Don't go wild now. <laughs> See ya. Why don't I make us a nice cup of tea? Oh, for God's sake, you stop fussing. We've all lost people, Johnny. Dig a bit deeper and we're all the flipping walking wounded. <coughs> Will you stop, please? Leave me be. That stuff will put you in an early grave. Good. Don't say that. I couldn't bear to lose you. I've lost enough. Shut up! I'm sick to death listening to you banging on about how much you know about grief. Blah, blah, blah. Making everything about you! I'm gonna get an early night. Just want this day to be over and done with. Oh, is it that bad? Well, I've cancelled everything. All the guests have been told. I just feel a bit deflated. Yeah, well, we've been looking forward to the wedding for so long, it, it does seem a shame to cancel it. Yeah, I know, but we agreed it's for the best, didn't we? Yeah, we did, but, um... Uh, me and Ali were having a, a chat about it. You and Ali? He said he'd, um, he'd help us any way he can. <laughs> he didn't help us how? Well, me and Ali, um, we think the wedding should go ahead. I mean, it wouldn't have to be a big show we do like before. You know, we just take over the bistro for the day, uh, have close friends and family, you know, all the people you really love. And obviously, we'd. Make sure we raise a massive glass to Eden. I'm slightly breaking it here. Shell, I can't tell whether that's a sad face or a happy face. It's a happy one. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Uh, what is going on? It's absolutely boiling in here. Must be you, menopausal. Who oh. said that you could when smell? When I was going through the change, my hot flushes were so bad you could fry an egg on my stomach. Right, uh, I am not menopausal. I'm only 24. Thermostat's cramped up full whack. We've got old bones. You're never watching Pulp Fiction. It's a modern classic. I love Tarantino. He was at school with my Harvey. Oh. I don't think so. He was. They were lunch monitors. Mm, anyway, you'll have to shush in a minute. My favourite scene's coming up. Butch knocks out the gimp with a single punch. You squeeze in here with us, Daniel. But before you do, can you nip out and grab us some nibbles? Hmm. Paying the bills. I've got the measure of you, Missy. You might act like you're all holier than thou. What are you on about? She's got intel on you. You leave my lovely Daniel a merry dance, playing him off against that little ginger lad. Hey, that is none of your business. I know you want me out of here so you can move in. Tough luck, Missy. I'm going nowhere. <laughs> Please stop shutting me out. I'm the one who truly understands what you're going through, cos I've been there. My beautiful boy died too soon. It was so cruel what you said to me. Because Tom died in an accident, somehow it wasn't as bad. Either way, he's not coming back, is he? Aiden chose to leave. That's the difference. And I was the one that found him. 
I found Tom. The sun was shining, the birds singing, and my son face down in his paddling pool. Time stops. You hold your breath and you think you'll never breathe again. And part of you wants it to be that way because you want to join them to wherever they've gone. But you can't. You must stay and live your life. Are we really going to compete over who's suffered the most? That's not what this is about. All I'm saying is you don't have to go through this alone. Aidan's death has affected us all. I hope you're not going to start pretending that you gave a toss about him. Because that would be insulting to Aidan, to me, to Kate, Carl and Michelle, the ones that actually loved him. I heard you on the phone. Oh, he's just the loveliest man. Stop it. I'm going to miss him so much. Stop it. Are you glad to see the back of him? Well, we weren't the best of mates, but I would never have wished him dead. Never. Looking forward to the funeral, are you? Gonna hang out the bunting, dance on his grave. Is this you now? Is this you for the rest of your life? Drowning in self-pity, wallowing in grief. It's like you're enjoying it. How could you say that? If you've been affected by issues raised in tonight's episode, you can visit itv.com forward slash advice for support information.